Well, to talk more about foreign military intervention in conflict areas like Libya and Syria, I'm joined now by Richard Weitz. He is the senior fellow and director of the Center for Political and Military Analysis at the Hudson Institute. Michael, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, first, I want to ask how you feel about you. this UK report. Is it correct in saying that the UK's intervention actually hastened the collapse of the country? Well, I, I imagine yet yeah, that can is it could be one interpretation of what happened. It is plausible, if only because we've heard the same kind of complaints laid at the feet of the uh, foreign community for how it intervened in Afghanistan and then didn't fail to fall through or overthrew the government in Iraq without creating a strong structure in its place. So it, it, it does fit a pattern we've seen. Which in which you can get strong support for military action to address an immediate threat, but then it's difficult politically, bureaucratically, to get the kind of resource and attention you need after the war is won in the battlefield to then carry through on a successful political transition. So this does appear to be a reoccurring problem of Western military interventions in the Middle East. A reoccurring problem. I mean, should there be penalties of any sort for having acted negligently in Libya and in other military strategies that have failed? No. I mean, I, in, 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 I, there's no evidence that the people did this, did, did it deliberately to cause harm to the uh, uh, Libyan people or wherever the intervention occurred. In many cases, I mean, if I, if I recall correctly at the time this intervention occurred, the main debate was, oh, there's going to be a massacre in, Bag in, in Benghazi. Uh, we got to protect them from uh, Gaddafi and so on. So people were acting out of good motives. I mean, the problem, it's more a fault of the, uh, it's, it's not something you bring people to trial, but certainly you would, the history writers are going to criticize uh, the governments for then after having accomplished their immediate objective, removing the dictator or the Taliban in Afghanistan, just failing to fall through. Um, and I'm sure this is a reoccurring problem in all policy making, that there just seems to be easier to mobilize support, popular support, bureaucratic support for a military uh, action seen as addressed against an immediate threat, but then it's, then attention wanders. Okay. So no, I wouldn't hold anyone criminally responsible for what happened. Okay. So how do you think the experience now in Libya, in this conflict, affected the strategy or lack of strategy perhaps in Syria? I would think it had minimal influence. I think that the Syria, the, I think that the Iraq example weighed much more heavily in the, how the Western governments were thinking about what to do in Syria. I think they were worried that if they got involved, they could probably have overthrown Assad. I think the Tur Turkish government at the time could have done the same thing, sent its army and gotten rid of deposed uh, Assad. But then what do you do? You're then left an occupation with a uh, hostile, potentially hostile uh, population. You, you can't keep your forces there indefinitely. And that's the kind of problem that we've seen in Afghanistan and, and particularly in Iraq. And I think that's what had a big effect. I don't think Libya's had as much impact on anybody's thinking uh, to, to, uh, to that extent. Okay. Richard Weitz, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us with your insight from Washington.